Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Star Atlas. I'm going to be talking to you about Sage Labs today and everything that you need to know to really get the best out of this and how you're going to do that. So uh, before we get started, let's just talk about what is Sage Labs. It launched today and it is Star Atlas's 2D top-down view of their economy management and it's the first stage. This is going to evolve, it's going to grow it is nothing to do with the Unreal Engine side of the game. It's nothing to do with the uh, immersive experience. And there's no story to this. This is purely just a stress test for the Solana network. Bearing in mind that this is a game that is on chain. There are no servers, no game servers. It's fully on chain on the Solana network. So it's a great stress test and also giving you a glimpse into the possibilities of the future. So with that being said, you will need to have a Phantom Wallet set up. You will need to have some assets. Um, but we're going to jump straight in here, launch the game, go to our wallet chooser, which is Phantom, and I'm going to connect my wallet. Now, because I've already created an account, the first time you do this, it'll ask you to create your character and choose a faction. There's three factions to choose from. I personally chose Mud. You choose whatever's right for you. It doesn't matter. Once you're in, you'll see this screen. Now, on this screen, it's going to tell you what galaxy you're in, the sectors in the galaxy, how many registered ship types there are, resource types, which are currently nine. Okay, and then you're going to see here, if you're ready to start playing, you need to navigate to a sector. All right, so let's have a quick look at this screen before we go any further. We've got disconnect, which we can do. We've got a tag here, uh, a settings tab here, which allows uh, Atlas Prime. And it tells you what the current exchange rate is on Atlas Prime. So this is what we need, we need to work out is when we pay our transaction fees, do we want to pay our transaction fees in Solana? Or do we want to pay our transaction fees in Atlas? And that's something we'll talk about in a moment. Then you'll be able to see your Atlas balance, your wallet, and any other details. So, okay, let's start at the beginning. This is the map that you can currently see, and there are nine resource types. But what are they? And what's the point of this? What are we doing? Well, what you can do at the moment in this playtest is you can take your current NFT assets, which are your ships, you can put those ships into a fleet and then you can send out that fleet with some resources to gather more resources. And then you can craft those resources into bigger and better items. So that's currently what we're going to do. Now, if you've got assets already and they're in a score, which is the old system, you'll have to go across to play.startatlas.com. You'll have to remove those and then you'll have to uh, put them in here. They need to be in your wallet. So you might need to remove them from score, the old system, uh, put them back into your wallet to come into here. Okay, so then the first thing you're going to see once you're where you are is your section, uh, your sector. So I chose MUD personally, so this is going to be my MUD uh, Central Space Station. Now we can see here you've got your uh, Central Space Station, and then we have uh, MUD 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, and 5 that go round this, okay? That's MUD. Over here we have Oni, and we have the Oni starting zone, and then we have uh, two, three, four, and five going around it. Okay, perfect. And then we have a store, which we have two, three, four, and five going around it. We had the same amount for each. Then we have these medium risk zones. Okay, and there's quite a lot of them, as you can see here. And you can choose from uh, medium risk zone one all the way up to, I think it's 35, possibly 35 in total. No, 36. 36 in total. So some of these medium risk zones belong to MUD, some of them to ONI, and you'll be able to see that on the left here. So we have our MUD CSS, we have 2345, and then we have these medium risk zones. Okay. And then we have the ONI CSS all the way through with the ONI controlled zones. Now I cannot go to one of these. If I click on this and navigate, because I'm not part of this faction, it will simply say, this star base belongs to a different faction. I can't go there. And that's going to be the same for anything else. If I go to a, a medium risk zone that is not controlled by my faction, again, I cannot go there. So you need to choose your faction carefully, but at the moment it's pretty much equal and even throughout. The only thing I've not confirmed is the NFTs that you can craft in the central space station. So let's talk about that because uh, that's where we're going to start. You're going to want to click on your central space station before you do anything else and navigate to that sector. Once you do that, 
you're going to see this screen. So this is the MUD Central Space Station. It tells us the location. There's some law if we want to click on it, which tells us all about the MUD race. And then we have some options. There's a top menu here, which is your Starbase. Any uh, undocked fleets, which is a fleet that is hovering above the Starbase. Any planets, uh, any mining operations, and any metadata. So we're going to look at the Starbase because that's where we need to start. And here we're going to deposit or withdraw ships. So if I click on this, it's going to give me an option to um, deposit ships from my wallet. So it says I do not have any ships. You'd need to have ships to deposit them. And you would simply deposit to Starbase. Okay, and if you want to remove them back to your wallet, you would take them out. So a Starbase is effectively a smart contract. It's an address that you're going to send your assets to. So they will leave your wallet. You are no longer going to be in custody of your assets. You are trusting that Star Atlas are going to manage them effectively for you in their smart contract. But you're not in control of them. Uh, it's just a promise that you're going to get them back once you're finished. Okay, so uh, once you've done that and you have them in your hangar, you'll have your assets. You'll then be able to go into your Starbase hangar. And as long as you have uh, vehicles here, you'll be able to click this button to form a new fleet. So if I go ahead and click on that, I would then be able to take any ships that I have in my inventory and I will be able to create a fleet. And that fleet is something that will then um, give me crew and it will also tell me how much fuel I will need, how much ammo I will need, maximum cargo hold, um, maximum warp distance. Uh, and all of this stuff is going to be very important for what we do next. So you can give a name to your fleet and you can add vehicles to your fleet. Now, you cannot remove vehicles from your fleet, but you can add more vehicles if you want to. If you want to remove vehicles from your fleet, you need to actually disband the entire fleet and start again. So just bear that in mind. All right, so once you have your fleet and your fleet has been set up, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add fuel and ammo, and you'll do that again from the Starbase hangar. Now, I'm going to go to a different Starbase hangar because my fleet currently isn't here right now. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard and I'm going to navigate to MUD5, MUD5. All right, I'm going to navigate to this section, which is a different sector. Now, whilst here, I'll be able to see the option if I deposit. There we go. I have 10 Fimble air bikes in my Starbase. So I can withdraw those from my Starbase. Or I, if they were in my wallet and they were stored in my wallet, I could uh, deposit them to my Starbase. So they're in my Starbase which now means that I can come across to my Starbase hangar. Now I'm here, form a new fleet, and I can actually click on this to add these. Now it says there are insufficient crew available in this Starbase to create the fleet. So each uh, of these ships has one crew. Now my crew are busy on another job at the moment, which is why I can't put them on here because they're doing something else. I would need to free up the crew who are currently crafting in the Starbase. And then I would be able to do that. But it does show you, if I was to add all 10 of these, I would have uh, a total of 4,500 capacity for my fuel, uh, which is obviously 450 and there's 10 of them. Uh, 1,000 ammo. I would have 2,500 cargo hold. All right. And I could warp 1.75 because it's only a very, very small bike. Um, in fact, the Fimble Air Bike, the great thing about this is not something that you would use um, to move around, the reason you would have the Fimble air bikes in the Starbase is for crafting. You simply just want the crew. And that means that whilst your fleet, your main fleet, is out mining and doing its other jobs, um, you bring the resources back to the Starbase, and that way the crew who are not on the Fimble air bikes can then craft. So, Fimble air bike being the cheapest option to buy to be able to get crew um, is, is what is recommended to be able to do that. All right, so let's just say we've got our fleet. Once we've got our fleet, uh, that is when we would then have to go to, uh, from here, we've got our fleet, and we would then, at that point, add in the fuel and the ammo. Now, in order to do that, we can go to um, my inventory, and here we can, from our wallet, put them into our Starbase. So here we can see in my Starbase, I currently have some copper wire. So what happened is I sent out my... Uh, my fleet, they went and they mined copper ore from the asteroids. I then crafted that copper ore into copper, 
and then I crafted that copper into copper wire. So that's something that's happened here. Um, anything that's in my wallet I can send across. So just bear in mind that there's a lot of different um, star bases. So before we go any deeper into this and we look in, into this any further, let's just pop across to Twitter and have a look at this image which is from the Hologram News Network, HNN. Great guys, definitely give them a follow and a like if you find this useful. But what they've done is taken from inside the game, if we come back to our dashboard, this image, this map, they've taken this and over the top of it they've mapped the nine possible resources and where you can find them as well as the richness level. So there are three separate richness levels at the moment. There's one, 1 1.5 and two. What that basically means is that the higher the richness level, the more valuable I believe that the resources are, but also possibly, and I need to confirm this, the quicker you can obtain those resources. And I haven't confirmed that yet, but that's something we'll look into. So at the moment, as you can see these numbers, here's a one, one, 1.5, here's a two. But because this is 1.5 and 2, I'm going to assume that this is down to the speed that you will collect the resources. Again, I will need that confirmed. Um, but there we go, we can see that. Uh, and that would make sense because diamonds you would imagine to be rare, but the, uh, the richness level is only 1. So I'm assuming right now, just going to put it out there, and it is an assumption, that the richness level is the, uh, the speed at which you can gather these resources. So we can see what resources out of the 9 that are available. And you can see them here. So right now I am in MRZ1 and I'm in MUD5. In MUD5 I'm doing some crafting and in MRZ1 I'm doing some mining. So let's just pop across to MRZ1 and have a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to select MRZ1. I'm going to navigate to that sector. And if I click on the Starbase and I look in the Starbase hangar, there's nothing here. Now the reason for that is because I have an undocked fleet, okay, and I can click on the undocked fleet and I can see that here, noobs in space, which is what I named my fleet and it's currently engaged in a mining operation and it is actually at this space station. So I can click on manage fleet and that's going to allow me to do some things and I'll show you that in just a second. I can also go to my inventory and here I can move over some fuel. So if I wanted to bring over, let's just say I wanted to bring over uh, 20,000 fuel. I wanted to bring over 20,000 ammunition. I wanted to bring over 20,000 food. And I wanted to bring over some toolkits. Now I'm not going to bring the toolkits, but let's just imagine I wanted to bring over the food, the fuel, and the ammunition. Uh, in fact, not even the food, I don't need it. So just the fuel and the ammunition for now. Because you need that, the fuel and the ammunition is what you'll need to be able to mine resources. So now I want to choose uh, my fleet and because my fleet's not uh, docked at the moment I can't send them directly to the fleet but I can import these from wallet so let's go ahead and import that from wallet I'll then have to sign a transaction and then tra that transaction will then bring this ammunition, ammunition and this fuel into the starbase okay and again if the fleet was docked I could transfer it directly to the fleet but it's not going to let me do that at the moment I can only import it from the wallet and actually that's not working right now because it's sometimes a little bit glitchy and something you just need to bear in mind. If it's glitchy, sometimes you just need to refresh and try again. It's blockchain. It's one of the um, growing pains of, of working with a blockchain. Now the other interesting thing to note is any cargo items that you want to be able to move back to your wallet, you can only do this you can only do this from a CSS it has to be from a central uh, space station you cannot import it from anywhere else in fact that might be why this isn't working maybe because I can only do this from the CSS and nowhere else which would be a little bit sad if that's true but also I understand um, it would be better if that was blocked out so let me just test that theory and let's have a look shall we let's go to the mud CSS uh, let's navigate to that sector. Uh, let's go to my inventory. And let's try to import from wallet. Yes, so it works. So you can only import to a central space station. Interesting. And that would then bring in uh, the ammunition and the fuel. All right, you can see what it's going to cost me in terms of Star Atlas. 
Okay. So I would need to import everything into here and then move it across to the other places that I wanted it to go to. So the further out you go, you need to start moving stuff across. And then if you want to craft, you can craft anywhere. But the idea is that if you're in your central space station, you can craft more. So simply being in the uh, central space station here, if I do this and I go to the crafting workshop, these are all the things that can be crafted. So this is the crafting screen. Now I can select a category, I can start with tier one. So these are all of the tier one resources. So if I have copper ore, I can craft that into copper. If I have copper, I can craft that into copper wire. If I have copper wire and magnets, I can make electromagnets. So I need to look at magnets. So then I come down for magnets, I need iron. Iron, I need iron ore. So I need copper and iron together Copper and iron together, I can make magnets, I can make copper wire, then I can make electromagnets. Uh, I can also take copper and polymer and I can make electronics. I can take biomass and I can make food. I can take iron and make a framework. I can take hydrogen and make fuel. So these are the different things that you can make on a tier one. If I want into tier two, I can make ammo. I can make crystal lattice, which needs diamonds and hydrogen. I can make framework too. I can make steel, which needs iron and carbon. I can make a toolkit. If I go to tier three, I can make energy substrates, uh, radiation absorbers, and a toolkit too. If I go to tier four, I can make particle accelerators, strange emitters, and a superconductor. Superconductor is going to need copper wire. Um, it's also going to need graphene. Uh, graphene is something that you can get from, uh, I believe that was tier two. No, it was tier one. And graphene is going to require carbon. So carbon into graphene, graphene then into that. Now, in a, a another location, you would have these tier fours and that's all you would have. So I'll just show you that now quickly. We're gonna go back to the dashboard and I'm gonna go to MUD2. Navigate to this sector, MUD2. And here, uh, I'm going to go to crafting and we're gonna select a category. Now here, we've only got the tier one uh, up to the tier four, same items, uh, same items everywhere, but there's an item, uh, there's a list missing here. Same if I go back again, return to the dashboard and I go to MRZ1. If I go to MRZ1, you'll notice everything here is the same. And I have not confirmed yet if it is the same crafting for each faction, but the same thing here. All of the same items, so same things that can be crafted at the moment, all of the same, but we're missing that extra list. And that is because the extra list is only available from your CSS, your Central Space Station. And if I come back to the Central Space Station and I go into the Crafting Workshop, I can now select SDUs. Now this is where people are going to be crafting. You can craft things from air bikes to uh, Fimble Mumbers, uh, PSR6, you can create a uh, uh, Tier ones, if you want to, um, so you can create uh, claim stakes, I believe. Uh, you can create golden tickets. Golden tickets are things that are going to be used in a raffle. It's going to come up later. Um, so lots and lots of things that you can craft, uh, and you can choose. Now, if you wanted to craft something like the butch, you're going to need millions and millions of resources. You need five million steel. Um, you're going to need five hundred thousand particle accelerators. So very, very difficult to be able to do that. Even something like the Fimble Mamba, you're still going to need like a couple of million copper wire. It's going to take quite a while to be able to do that. And so when you decide, because that's really what this is at the moment, this playtest is about crafting. That's all it is. It's about utilizing your resources um, uh, that you have, your assets, and using them in a way to be able to be efficient. And so that's where this comes down to. How do you become efficient? Well, first of all, you need to understand, well, what are you going to build? And that's what you'll need to look at. So for example, let's take for this uh, a thimble member. Let's say I wanted to craft this. Well, I need to look at what's required for that. Well, I know I'm gonna need these ingredients. So let's come across, because unfortunately we're gonna need to do this. We're going to need to come across to Google Sheets. There's no way to escape this. So, all right, so we're gonna look at what we want to create and we're gonna look at what that requires. So we know we need steel and we know how many steel we need, okay? What else are we going to need as a result of this? Right, well, we know we're also going to need graphene. So in fact, 
I'll just grab these from here and I'll paste them across and that'll make it nice and clean. Okay, so I need this as well. I'm going to need some copper wire and quite a lot of this as well. And then what we're going to need to do once we've done this is we're going to need to break down, well, what does this involve? And this is where for a lot of people, this might not be fun. For a lot of people, they're not going to want to do this. This is not a game. The only people that are going to enjoy this are the people that are thinking they're going to make some money off the back end of this should they be able to sell those assets that they've now crafted. And rightly so. Question is, what's going to make you the most money? Because that's what people are interested in. That's what makes this fun. The potential to earn money is the fun. If you're doing this and it's costing you money, then it's not going to be fun. Why are you going to do it? So we're just putting in here everything that we need to be able to craft this. Now, there'll be applications out there. There'll be guilds that will be trying to entice you in. There'll be spreadsheets out there. There'll be apps. There'll be all sorts of things going live today that will be able to do all of this for you. And there's other people that are going to be creating bots that are going to do this automatically. So you're going to be competing and fighting with, you know, quite a, a wide range of people. But this is what we're going to need. So now we know we need this. We need to have a look. At, well, OK, well, what's required for steel? So let's go and have a look. So in order to make steel, and that's not even a tier one item, we need to come into tier two. We need iron and carbon. OK, so now we know that to make steel, we're going to need iron. And we're going to need carbon. And we know that we're going to need one iron and two carbon. So one iron and two carbon makes one steel. OK, so we know we've got that so far. All right. So now we need to know, well, how do we make iron? Well, in order to make iron, we need to come to our tier one. And iron comes from iron ore. And that's a one to one. OK, so now we know we're going to need iron ore. One iron ore makes one iron. And for carbon, let's go and look at carbon. All right, so in order to make carbon, we're going to be looking at, where is carbon? Mm, hold on. Oh, carbon's just a, oh, sorry, carbon's just gonna be a, uh, yeah, sorry, carbon is just a raw resource. So that's, that's just on there. So that's fine. So carbon. Okay. So we know we need carbon and we know we need that. And that's going to allow us to make steel. All right. The next one we need to go to. So this is where we can click here and we're going to need carbon again. So that's fine. But this requires five carbon to make one of these. All right. So this one requires carbon, but this requires five carbon. Copper wire. Well, copper wire is going to require copper. Uh, and that's going to require one, and that's going to require copper ore, and that's going to require one. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do here is, there we go, we're going to try and keep this, in fact, let me just do this, so we'll do that, and we'll do that, and then we've got some breakdown there, perfect, okay, so then we've got copper wire, which requires copper, which requires copper ore. So this is tier one, this would be like effectively tier two, and this is tier three, or what, whatever way you want to look at it. Electromagnetic, okay, so let's go and have a look at that. Electromagnetic requires magnets and copper wire. Okay, so we need magnets, and we need copper wire. Uh, we need one magnet, and we need four copper wire. For copper wire, we need copper. Okay, and then we'll have to put another one of these in here. And that requires copper ore. One copper ore makes one copper wire. Uh, copper, which makes one copper wire. We need four of those. Magnets, on the other hand. Magnets, how do we make magnets? So let's just go to all. We'll scroll down to magnets. And you can already see the work that needs to go into this, right? Magnets need iron. Okay. So magnets need iron. Uh, insert one more to the right. And we can just delete that one because that was a mistake. Okay, so that's iron. And that's going to need iron ore. All right, and let's just check. So two iron makes one. Okay, so two iron to make one magnet. All right, and one iron ore makes one iron. Perfect. So one iron ore makes one iron. We need two iron to make um, magnets. I should probably swap these over so they're the right way around as well. So let's just do that. It's going to make life a little bit easier as we're, as we're reading this. 
So magnets into iron, into iron ore, copper ore into copper, into copper wire, iron into iron ore, carbon just comes, carbon comes from iron, copper ore, copper ore. Perfect. Superconductors. Superconductors. So let's have a look at these. Superconductor. All right, so superconductor requires graphene and copper wire. All right, well, let's start with a copper wire, shall we? So copper wire, how many of those do we need? Well, we're going to need five of those, all right, which we know is going to uh, require copper and copper ore. All right, so now coming back here as well, looking at graphene, which we already know because we've done this one. Graphene requires carbon. All right, so this one is copper wire and this one is graphene. How many graphene does it require? Two, which means that we're going to need carbon. How many carbon do we need? Five. Five makes a graphene. We need two graphene. Okay, and then we're going to need, that's quite a lot, quite a lot there. When you think about how much carbon you're going to need. So you're going to need 10 carbon just to make um, the graphene that you need and you need yeah, quarter of a million of these, which means you need half a million graphene, which means you're going to need 1.25 million carbon just for the superconductor alone. <laughs> yeah, just quite a bit, which isn't bad enough that you also need copper wire as well. Yeah. All right, and then survey data units. Wow, you need 64,000 survey data units, and the only way you can get a survey data unit is not by crafting them, you need to go and scan the planets. And a planet requires, if you want to scan a planet, um, I can't do that from here, but if you want to scan a planet, uh, I believe it's 20. It costs 20 to do. And there's no guarantee you're going to get it either. So let me just double check that. Uh, we'll go to MRZ1, navigate to this sector. Undocked fleet, manage fleet, sector scan, 26 toolkits. 26 toolkits. All right. So, um, I'm going to put an X by this because it's, it's random. It's no guarantee. You might do 10 scans and only get one. So, yeah, that's not an exact number. So, already we can see what we're going to need as a result. And then afterwards, we can start to do some calculations. We can start to work out, well, if we need this many, then we need that many, etc., etc. This is a lot of work. And you also have to consider that every time you go out to collect resources, you're going to be paying a transaction fee for that. What is that transaction fee? Well, we need to look at the price of Solana and understand how much Solana is. We need to have a look at how much the transaction fees are in Solana. We also need to look at the price of Atlas. And if you're choosing to use Atlas Prime, what is that exchange rate? So the current exchange rate here, it says zero to one. Um, that's obviously broken and not working, but yeah. that's going to tell you what the exchange rate is then you're going to have to work out how many transactions do you need and for that you need to work out the size of your fleet my fleet for example has a capacity of 72,000 there are people with capacities of half a million a million these people with big capacities so you have to consider uh, and there's other people with capacities of like a couple of thousand is it even worth you doing this? Is it worth you going and mining this? Because you have to pay to get across. So what you would do in the movement screen is you would have to warp. So this is where my current location is. And if I wanted to move to here, if I wanted to move to here, I would have to warp. Okay, if I wanted to move to somewhere else, I would need to warp there. Now, if I did that and I moved to somewhere else, I would have to wait. I would spend fuel to do that. I then have to look at my cargo. In order to mine, I need food in my cargo. I can then go into this mining operation. Now this mining operation is finished, so I can show you what happens. The reason it's finished is because it's been going for an hour and you can see it's mined this much, but this is capacity. So now it's ticking over, but it's not doing anything. So I need to harvest my resources and I need to stop mining. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I've got nine ships in this fleet, 47 crew members. Uh, you can see my fuel, my ammo and my cargo. So I'm gonna pay this transaction fee. All right, so this is going to cost me 0 0.002. So let's just make a note of that. So uh, TX fee is uh, Sol and it is 0 0.000. Was it three zeros? Let me just check that. Need to confirm. No, it's 0 0.002. Okay. 
All right. So how much is Seoul at the moment? Let's have a look at that. So Seoul is 19.56. Okay. So Seoul is uh, 19.56. So then we need to work out if that's the price in US dollars and this is the price in Seoul. Um, we need to work this out. So it's going to be, uh, bear with me a second while I do this. Um, I believe it's going to be this divided by this, right? No, nope. uh, it's going to be the other way around, isn't it? So it's going to be this divided by this. All right, so that's how much it's going to cost us in US dollars. So, all right, not too bad. We can live with that. Uh, in fact, if we say equals um, this divided by this, and we want to put that into US dollars. All right, so... There you go. It's going to cost you that much. So it's not much when you look at transaction fees. Not a problem at all for that. All right. So let's now go back and we're going to do that. So we're going to pay that transaction fee. Confirm. All right. And that's going to stop us mining. So now my ships, which are in my fleet, my fleet is above this uh, star base, but it's not mining anymore. It's just sitting there doing nothing. Okay. So it's undocked. And it says it's engaged in mining operations. I'm waiting for that transaction to go through. It's going to take some time. All right, now that looks like it's just finished. Something went wrong. So I'm going to go back to manage fleet. And by the way, don't do what I did. Do not click on self-destruct. I did that. There was no pop-up. It destroyed my fleet and cost me a fortune. I, I lost over 100,000k of resources. And I, I lost another 50% of fuel. And I have to pay an Atlas fee. So just don't click that button. It's absolutely terrible they've put that in there. I hate it. I, it has no pop-up confirmation. It's near other buttons. It's it's really bad UI. Just do not, do not go near it. All right. And the reason that's there is if you get caught and you're moving somewhere and you run out of fuel, you need to destroy your fleet. And it's irreversible. All right. So I want to try this again. We're going to harvest resources and stop mining. We're going to try and do this again. Might have been that I left it too long before I went through. So we'll go ahead and we'll confirm this. Hopefully this will work this time. Yep, that looks like it's stopped. There we go. Look, we can see the stuff's gone down. There we go. Fleet ready for command. And again, do not click this self-destruct button. So now what I need to do, because I now have my, um, if I look in my cargo, I've got this copper ore. Uh, I need to remove that. So now I need to dock my ship. So I dock it on the space station. Okay, and it's now going to be docked. Okay, just waiting for that. There we go. So we need to do another transaction. This one's going to cost, um, look at that, point, uh, zero, point 0.15 Atlas. So we'll confirm that. 0.15 Atlas. So let's make a note of that. 0 0.15. All right. And then uh, Atlas in USD is going to be, at the moment, it's priced at point. 0014. All right, so let's do that. So uh, 0014. Okay, which means if we work this out, it's going to be equals this divided by this. And that's how much we're going to end up paying in US dollars for this transaction fee. So again, let's move across. Let's go for US dollars. It's going to cost us to dock. It's going to cost us one cent to dock. All right, good to know. One cent to dock. Uh, and this is, yeah, price of Seoul. This is a transaction fee in Seoul. Okay, so this is um, stop mining. Dock in Atlas and then Atlas USD and then that's it. Yep, okay. And then that's docking USD. So now we're starting to understand what the fees are because we need to understand the fees to know whether this is worth it or not. So then we come back here, we're undocked. Come back to our Starbase. Okay, and now we can come down, we can look in our Starbase hangar and we can see our fleet is here. If I click on that fleet, I can scroll down and I can see my copper ore. All right, I can now transfer my cargo to my Starbase and your Starbase has an unlimited storage. So right now I'm going to be able to do that. There we go, we can confirm that. Awesome. Now that's done. 
Now, what I need to be careful of and I need to consider is my fuel. Okay, I need to be consider. I need to be uh, considerate of my fuel. How much fuel do I have? Do I have enough fuel to get back? Do I have enough fuel to get back? So when I come here, what I should have done is I should have initially filled up my cargo with fuel and brought it with me, because it looks like, and maybe I'm wrong, but it looks like if I go to my inventory, if I want to deposit some fuel from my wallet to here, I don't think I can do it. It won't let me do it. So I have to do it from the CSS. And it doesn't even tell you that. It even looks like it gives you the option. Which, mm, if it's in my wallet, I want to bring it across. But it doesn't tell you that you can only do it. It doesn't tell you that you can only do it. Like, none of this works. And I can try and refresh and see if that makes a difference. But I don't think it will. But we'll try it. We'll try and refresh. We'll launch the game. Choose our wallet. We'll go to connect. We'll launch it. We'll go to where we was, which was MRZ1. Navigate to the sector. From here, we're going to go down to my inventory. We're going to click on fuel. And we're going to type in 10,000. And we're going to import from wallet. We want to put this into this fleet. Transfer to fleet. It will not let us do it. So we can only do it in the CSS, not from anywhere else. So this shouldn't even be an option. It should even say here. There should be a note that says you cannot do this, but it doesn't. Um, so we have to make sure we get our fuel in from our CSS and we send it across. Something else to remember, because you're going to use fuel every time you start mining. All right, so what does that mean? Well, now I'm in the Starbase. Okay, so I can go across to my Starbase hangar. I can look here and I can undock. I can undock. So if I undock, there we go, confirm. I've now undocked. Now I can go to my undocked fleet, go to fleet management, making sure you do not click on the self-destruct button because there's no pop-up. If you click that button, your ship will be destroyed. You will lose your fuel. You will lose your ammo. You will lose your cargo and you will be sent back to the start of your CSS, which means you'll have to move back out again which is what happened to me today, so just bear that in mind. If you misclick that by mistake, it's going to be expensive. All right, we're going to go to Mining Ops, and we're going to choose what do we want to mine. Now, because, again, I'm here, I'm in MRZ1, which is 1.5, and I've got two options here. I've got iron and copper. And so I know that I want copper at the moment. I need millions and millions of copper. So that means I'm going to be able to initiate. Now, to initiate, it's going to cost me 463 fuel just to be able to start mining. It's also going to cost me uh, ammo consumption per second and food consumption per second. Initiate mining. Now what I don't know and I need to um, take into consideration, this looks like it's a one-off cost of fuel. When this says ammo cost per second, does this stop when, you're, when you stop mining? So once your cargo space is full, does that then stop the ammo consumption and the food consumption, or does it continue until you harvest resources and stop mining? I don't know. I would hope that it stops, because that would make sense. But I don't know. We need to double check that. And that's something else we need to find out, because maybe we need to keep an eye on this. It takes about 30 minutes to be able to do this, which means you need to be around to be able to stop it. It's going to be a very intensive game, and there's going to be a lot of bots that run this uh, for efficiency. So if you're a player, just know that you're going to be competing with a lot of bots um, that are already going to be automating this process to take out all of this manual clicking that's required. With that being said, that's what we're going to be doing at the moment. So we're going to be working out what it's going to cost us, how much resources we're going to spend as a result, how much those resources cost to buy. And once we've worked all of that data out, We'll work out, should we buy the resources directly? Should we go and buy the end result directly? If we're after a Fimble Mamba, how much does that cost? Well, let's go to Star Atlas and let's have a look in the marketplace. Now, the price of the Fimble Mamba in, Star, uh, in the marketplace, it varies. And the recommended retail price is not representative of the actual price, but we'll have a look. So we're going to go to Marketplace right now. We're going to go to Ships. I think it's a medium ship. Yep, Fimble Mamba. 
We're going to click on this. And right now it says, <laughs> see, the, the recommended, the, the, the retail price is 1,700, which we know that's not true. Um, there's a seller here, which is 390. Now this look, they make this look like it's a real person. This is not a real person. This is a, this is a bot. This is an automated market maker that is doing this. It's not a real person. Um, it's also very interesting. There's two of them. So one of them is recycled. So it looks like it's been listed a day ago. This is automated. This is not a real person. In fact, I've seen this address many times. And if you look, uh, you'll see it on various other items as well. So NPZT, if we go and look somewhere else, I'm just going to go and look randomly. Um, might not be there, it will be somewhere else, but we'll see it, we'll see it used elsewhere as well. It, it's used on other vehicles. Um, but yeah, these are automated addresses that are used to uh, buy and sell this stuff. So uh, this is a Fimble Mamba EX, which is, there's no sellers of these at the moment, no one's selling it. Um, buyers you can ignore, um, doesn't really matter, but if you wanted to buy one of these right now, you could buy one for $390. $390 is the price of the Fimble Mamba right now. I don't, like if I was to buy that, another one would then become available and there would always be a couple available and it's to instigate the fact that there are sellers and that there are people selling this. Um, make of that what you will. There's what people are willing to buy for it. Uh, the the most, this one here, 260. So someone's willing to pay 260. People put in lowball offers all the time. Obviously, this is never going to fill, but then this one may never sell. You have to kind of figure out that ground in the middle. So let's just say that this is worth somewhere in a region of $350 at the moment. Because if I put it up for $350, I'm pretty sure it would sell. I could probably put it up for free, 375 and it would sell. Because someone would look at it and they would see it and they would take it. Because they would think it's a good deal compared to this, which is the psychology behind this. So now we're looking at $375. So okay. So I look at this and I think approximately $375 is the current market price of this. If I was to go and, well, if I was to buy one now, if I went to go and buy one, it'd be $390 to buy it. So the question I have to ask myself is, how much time is it going to take me to acquire all of these resources, survey data units being the hardest to obtain, because you don't know how many toolkits it's going to require, because that doesn't guarantee one. So, and 64,000 of these as well is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. So, bearing in mind of everything you're going to need here, how much money is it going to cost you in fees, and is it worth your time to be able to make this? That's kind of what you've got to be asking yourself. And that requires some calculations, some spreadsheets, and if spreadsheets aren't for you, then I'm pretty much assuring you right now, if spreadsheets aren't for you, then this game right now is probably not going to be for you. This is for people that want to automate, want to create bots, or want to sit there and min-max and work out the most effective way to be able to craft something to potentially sell it so that people that can't be bothered can go and buy it directly. Um, I do like the idea that the, um, the founders are moving away from... Um, selling stuff themselves and they're, they're now starting to create this player-based economy where players will be in charge of everything. So the fleets, and I love this. In fact, I kind of wish they started like this. I wish they started the game by not selling any ships and by saying to people, here is this base version of the game, go and craft your own ships. And then the community could have priced it accordingly. How much effort is it gonna take? How much time is it gonna take? How much money? That's how much the ship is worth rather than what they did at the moment, which is put this price tag on these ships, and now the whole market crashed, and as a result, who knows what they're really worth? Well, if this is the only way you could buy them, then this, this would be what they were worth. If you could only buy them by crafting them, that would be amazing. At the moment, though, the, the market's kind of saturated, and we have to wait for that market to dry up to actually get an idea, and that could take months, even years, before we, we fully understand um, how the, and it's going to be easy in hindsight to look back at the economy and see how it's worked out. But that's, it's just something that's going to take time. So bearing that in mind. Okay, so that's how we can mine resources. We can then move from place to place, making sure we don't run out of fuel. That's important. Knowing that we can only get stuff from the CSS and then move it accordingly. All right, so then the next thing we need to do is look at um, our crafting. So my crafting is currently being done on location. Uh, for that to happen here, I've got 10 of these um, Fimble Mambas 
because I get the crew from them. And here we go. So I've got 39 minutes left and I am making 65,000 copper from copper ore. After this, I will make that copper into copper wire. I'll have to claim this first and then I can do that. And the reason I've done this is because I started here because this is a richness level of one. And then I move to the next location, which is a richness level of 1.5, because I want to be able to test the difference to see uh, how much of an impact it has going from a, a 1 to a 1.5. Hopefully this helps you make sense of, of what you're doing and why you're doing it. At the moment, if you've got a small fleet, the uh, fees alone are probably going to cost you a lot more than it's worth. So just bear that in mind. It has to be economically viable for you to want to do this. Otherwise, what's the point? You're not going to craft anything. So just bear that in mind. Uh, consider what it is, what you need, what you want to do, and, uh, and go from there. But that's it at the moment. You can uh, move around. You can scan locations. Uh, and as you're doing such, you can... Uh, you, you, <laughs> yeah, as, as a result of that, you can scan locations. You can move from locations from one to another. You can um, gather resources. You can maybe find some goodies around the place as well. But this is, uh, this is what they've kind of built. This is what we're playing with at the moment. And this is the kind of next iteration on from what we did before uh, when we did our initial uh, Sage testing. So Sage Labs is now live. It's been live from today. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Um, people have got some big fleets already. There's a lot of stuff being mined already. Everything's on chain. So that's fascinating for you to be able to go through and see. But just remember that you're going to need uh, to manage this effectively. You're going to need a spreadsheet. And uh, last thing is if you're in the manage uh, fleet, stay away from that destruction button. It's, uh, it's very dangerous. All right. Uh, that's pretty much it for now. So we can see on this asteroid belt here on MRZ1-2 uh, here where we are at the moment. Uh, we can currently see seven miners on here, two resources, and a currently a total of 6.2 million resources have been mined. That's within this sector. Uh, there's nothing else here at the moment that we can do. It's just the asteroid belt. Yeah. I don't know what max HPT means. I don't think that means anything. We've got the coordinates here, which is 523, which I think if I look at, it's currently where I am. So 523 should be where I am. Don't know if it tells me my coordinates. No, nope, it doesn't that I'm aware of. It does say I'm at MRZ12. All right. So yeah, that's everything that I've done there. Uh, we're going to wait. Again, it takes about half an hour for this to done. You can see I'm at 21,000 out of my 68 capacity. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how this works. And then afterwards, we will just continue uh, harvesting this, work out the cost of how much it's costing us in times of R4. So that's the other thing you can do. You can look at what it costs to buy them. So you can go across to here. Uh, if we don't want to buy ships, we want to buy resources. Uh, let's say, it, for example, I want to buy fuel. And look, there's a lot of different things that you can buy here now. A lot of different things you can buy here now. The survey data unit, they're the real ones that we're going to want to buy. And I don't... Oh, okay, so they do have them for sale at the moment. There are quite a few of them for sale. Look, they've all been listed. Uh, you just have to wait and see the price of these to figure out if it's worth it or not. But we're going to need thousands of these. And yeah, people are already starting to sell them, which is nice to see. And some real players as well. Awesome. Right, that's it for the video. Hope it's been helpful. I will see you a bit later. Take care. Bye-bye.